operating Box 890, the address 689 5th Avenue. Last night there was a fire in this apartment building. The fire marshals were called to determine the uh, cause and origin of the fire. The fire happened in an apartment here. Uh, this is uh, housing for medical students. And the occupant was not in the apartment at the time. So uh, the fire department had a forced entry into the apartment. So what we have here is as we come in, we're going to look for the least amount of damage uh, for the, to the most damage. So as we come in, we see some uh, heat and uh, soot that's on the walls from the smoke. And as we come into the apartment further, we're gonna notice that there's a, a fire damage into the corner here to the left, okay, near the window. And through some preliminary phone calls and some interviews, uh, we found out that the uh, occupant was at home prior to the fire, approximately 20 to 30 minutes before. And he, he comes in, uh, he gets changed, he leaves. His air conditioner is running, his air conditioner is in the middle window, and he leaves the apartment and goes to another apartment, to a friend's house, and a 911 call is placed by the tenant upstairs. The tenant upstairs says that there's smoke, and this door is uh, locked, and the fire department had a forced entry upon arrival. So, okay. I'm a fire marshal with the New York City Fire Department. Uh, I work in Citywide South Command, which is located in Brooklyn and we cover uh, all of Brooklyn, all of Staten Island, and in Manhattan from 110th Street all the way down to Battery Park. Uh, fire marshal in New York City is not similar to fire marshals in the rest of the country or around New York State. Actually here we are sworn police officers, we are fire investigators, and uh, we have the power of arrest, and we go out and conduct the complete investigation from start to finish. So if it is a criminal investigation, and a suspicious fire, and it is deemed arson, we will make the arrest and we will work with the prosecutors and we will try the case uh, up to the very end. And as I said, I can't thank enough the, the, the partners in this endeavor, this Commissioner Kelly and Commissioner Sal Pisano, as well as his chief fire marshal. The top count of this indictment is arson in the first degree, and 10 of the 18 have been so charged. Five defendants who committed the arson and five crowns were the leaders of the tribe who issued the commands to commit the arson. They targeted two residences in Borough Park. They threw Molotov cocktails uh, at, at these residents. They completely destroyed one of them. And it was simply a callous disregard for the, uh, the lives of people who lived in that area. I'd like to commend the fire marshals who quickly determined that both of these fires were intentionally set and recognized that members of the Latin Kings gang were responsible. I'd also like to thank the Police Department's gang unit and the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office for all their great work on this important investigation. This successful investigation is a clear message to those who use fire as a weapon to endanger our communities and our firefighters. They will be held accountable for their actions and brought to justice. Thank you. My name is Robert Burns. I'm the Chief Fire Marshal, Chief in Charge in New York City Fire Department's Bureau of Fire Investigation. Our primary mission is to investigate the cause and origin of all complex, suspicious, and fatal fires in New York City. We are one of the oldest uh, law enforcement entities in the city of New York. Uh, we were established in 1854 uh, when a, uh, Alfred E. Baker noticed a number of suspicious or peculiar fires. Uh, he brought that to the attention of the, uh, the chief of the volunteer fire department, the Metropolitan Volunteer Fire Department at the time, who thought that somebody needed to look into this, and he uh, appointed Alfred E. Baker as the first chief fire marshal for the city of New York. Uh, and that was in 1854. Currently, uh, we're staffed with the Chief Fire Marshal, uh, Assistant Chief Fire Marshal. We have three uh, Commander Fire Marshals, 23 Supervisors, and about 100 Fire Marshals working out of two main locations throughout the city. They handle the day-to-day -day investigations. So now after doing a preliminary scene examination, what we did was reconstruct the fire scene to the best of our ability. We were unable to reconstruct this bookcase because it was burned away but most of the debris is right here, which we would sift through and look for other uh, pieces of fire evidence. Now, the back of the couch here shows that obviously the fire was hotter on this side of the couch and traveled this way, in addition to the back of the chair showing that it came from this direction and went up that way is also consistent with the extension cord being 
in, in and around this area with that adapter, which shows the air condition, the heat traveled from here up again in, in a V pattern, burning the air condition from this bottom corner, which there's damage to this side of the air condition, which shows us that there's um, no damage on this side of the air condition, which also shows us that the carpeting was melted and the cord and the extension cord was melted in and around this area, which then caught the bookshelf, which caused the fire to further accelerate and further spread, okay, to, to this corner. And in addition, started to burn the carpet, which we find burned carpeting and pieces here. The cause of this fire seemed to be having an extension cord of this type, which is these uh, low grade, low cost extension cords, which uh, tend to be white, black, or brown or gray in color and they usually purchase at some kind of dollar stores. Uh, this one has one outlet on one side, two outlets on the other side. And what tends to happen is in older buildings, there's only uh, a two-prong outlet instead of a three-prong outlet. And what this uh, occupant did was take this adapter, which goes from two prongs, and plugged it into this type, this part of the uh, extension cord, okay, in this fashion. And what he did was plug the air conditioner directly into here. And at this point, there was a failure in here. So this extension cord failed. Uh, most, most people don't have adequate extension cords because they try to save money and not buy the uh, larger gauge, which would be 12 gauge, 14 gauge, or even sometimes 10 gauge for very large appliances. So um, a word of advice would be to try to buy very high quality extension cords. If we find that a fire is deemed suspicious or it's leaning towards it's intentionally set or it's an awesome case, what we'll do is, uh, if we feel there's any kind of accelerants or evidence that needs to be taken, we'll uh, package that evidence uh, and we'll uh, voucher it at the precinct uh, of occurrence. And then from there, we'll take it to the NYPD uh, lab that's in uh, Queens, and they will test it for the presence of ignitable liquid or for fingerprints or for DNA or whatever we need for that case. I'm Fire Marshal Gregoli. I am part of the technical surveillance unit for uh, the fire marshals. This is the technical surveillance room. Um, we assist fire marshals in the field uh, and help them enhance their cases with any kind of technology that they need to do the job. We have uh, many, many tools available to us. We have um, covert listening devices, covert surveillance for video. Uh, we also go out in the field and do video canvases which really is going out and looking for any building in the area that does have video possible, video evidence possibly of the fire or the fire area. Uh, could be blocks away, could be right on the fire itself. We'll go out to the scenes and then download video from those places and uh, then have that video available to the marshals that are catching the job. This is uh, Fire Marshal's mobile surveillance unit. It's used to respond to the scene of fires and uh, aid whatever uh, technical help we can do to the fire marshal on the scene. It has many capabilities, including remote monitoring of a scene and um, for monitoring of all radio frequencies. The two objects on the table are both examples of digital video recorders. The one on the left has been exposed to a fire and could be found at a fire scene in this condition. To look at it, you would think that there is no use of this anymore. Uh, and really, we were able to pull a hard drive from this unit and to be able to view the video surveillance of the building before the fire. Well, my name is Ralph Bernard. I'm supervising fire marshal in the New York City Fire Department. I've been with the fire department since 1984, and in 1993 I became a fire marshal. I'm currently in charge of the photo and video unit, or the forensic unit. We are charged with two different responsibilities. One is training, and the other is fire investigation. Currently how it works is the f we have a fire that's, I don't know where it happens, but it needs further investigation. The fire marshals, are dis they dispatch, they have their fire scene unit. The fire scene unit goes and documents, collects evidence. They photograph the evidence. They photograph the fire building. They photograph the fire scene. That evidence is now in the camera. What happens? The negatives are brought here to the photo unit at the fire department headquarters where the negatives are developed. They're developed and they're, they're stored in the filing cabinets that we have on, on the side over here. So we're looking down here, if you notice, there's dates on the folders, 1958, 1957. These are negatives from that era. And these, these all happen to be fire scene investigations. These were taken by the photo unit. These photos 
were used, I don't know if this particular one that I pulled out was used, but they were used for criminal prosecution. Okay. We had 6,400 investigations last year. Of those 6,400 investigations, we made nearly 600 arrests. Uh, so we're pretty, we're pretty energetic, we're pretty busy here. I, I'm in the Bureau probably close to 21 years. I was uh, eight years as a New York City firefighter, uh, which I enjoyed, and it was a great job. Uh, I thought that this would give me the ability to use a little more deductive reasoning, uh, and I was, was time for a change. So I took the fire marshal's test. I found it interesting right from the beginning, and uh, it's, here I am. A case that I had uh, a, few, a few days back, I worked with uh, my partner on, and it was, uh, there was two males found uh, in a van that was on fire. The uh, police department rolled up on the scene, they just happened to come. They saw that there was a driver's seat on fire in a van, and they didn't realize there was uh, people uh, sleeping in the van, actually living in the van. One person made it out, one person did not make it out. So we're called to the scene to determine the cause of the fire and after an investigation we determined that the fire was intentionally set and it wound up being an arson case so the difference between us making that an arson or making an intentionally set fire as opposed to an accidental fire where they could have been smoking or something malfunctioned with the van is a difference between it being an accidental death to a homicide so you get satisfaction out of knowing that by doing a complete and thorough investigation you're actually uh, speaking for that person who's killed by that fire. So that gives you a great satisfaction, knowing that uh, somebody will be brought to justice for that person's death.